So let's move on into the next lesson. For this time, the lesson will be specifically about what are called contemporary perspectives of personality. What you can call the more modern, modern uh, perspectives in personality research today. Typically, when we talk about personality from a general introduction to psychology sense, it divides into areas which are called the classical perspectives of personality. And in the classical perspectives, you talk about Freud, because Freud is credited to be the first guy that discussed the concept of personality. But when you move into the contemporary perspectives, the person that usually stands out is another guy called Gordon Alpert. So Alpert was specifically interested about personality when he had an encounter with Freud, so they met. Freud was now like established figure in the field of psychology. Alport was a 22, I believe, 23 year old student. And in the conversation that they had, Alpert was saying, why are we focusing so much on the unconscious, but we're not focusing really on what is consciously happening in the, in the person. So, it is very famously known that Alpert began the contemporary perspective of personality by focusing on the study of traits. Alpert had a very interesting, one day had a very interesting idea, and he asked his assistant, I want you to go through the dictionary and look out for all the adjectives that can be used to describe a person. Quite a daunting task. So, from that point, they found a bunch of words, it was something like 18,000 words that could be used to describe a person. And from there, they began to try to say, well, all these words seem to have something in common. So how can we put them all together into what we could call like a category? And that's how the trade theory emerged. Think, you know, think of going through a, a date. It's your first date with someone. And a person is asking you, hey, you know, tell me a little bit about you. Think of all the different words that can be used to describe a person. A person may say, well, I'm funny, I'm uh, a good cook, I uh, tend to be sometimes a little bit the uh, judgy of other people, I can be uh, a little bit easily annoyed, I can be outgoing, I can be charismatic, I can be whatever. There's a bunch of words that can be used out there to describe a person. The concept of fundamental traits is, well, for all the different words that can be used to describe a person, if you line them up, a lot of words may have something in common. So, for example, if I talk about a person that is uh, sociable, a person that tends to be charismatic, a person that is outgoing, a person that is very talkative, like all those different words seem to encompass something in common. So they become a trait. Usually the person that is outgoing tends to also be very sociable, tends to be very talkative, tends to be charismatic, tends to have a lot of friends. A person that is like that would be considered within the trait of extraversion. So the person that is high on the trait of extroversion, we can almost predict this would be the person that would be in the supermarket, you know, waiting for the cashier to pay for the groceries. And there may be a person in the front and there may be a person in the back. If a person that is very high in the sense of extroversion, that person is more likely going to find a way to strike a conversation with the person in the front or the person in the back while waiting for the turn. That is because all the other characteristics lie together into this major category. That's a fundamental trait, and that's how psychology studies personality today. Now, it's important to notice a couple things. First, the concept of fundamental traits implies that it's enduring, consistent, and those are patterns. So, the idea is that if one day you wake up and you don't feel like going out, but the rest of the days in your life, you tend to be very outgoing, you tend to be very sociable, but you know, who knows, maybe you drank too much and you're a little hangover and you just don't feel good. So maybe one day you decide to stay home. If I'm staying home for one day, does that mean that I'm not sociable at all? No. To really describe a person, we don't look at what the person did one day, but we look at the characteristics of how the person has behaved for a long, 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 long time. 
So that's what really is used to describe a person. That is really the fundamental trait. Now, trait theory has moved on to try to find a lot of different traits that can be used to describe a person. And once trait theory emerged, the field of personality was now focused on trying to find the different categories that can be used to describe a person. And it got really fun. It's a lot of fun for all the things that they found. Point here though, fundamental traits are this, and there's a lot of different trait theories out there, but the most famous one, the most common one, is called the Big Five Factor Theory. So the Big Five encompasses five major traits, which are openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, neuroticism. I'm not going to go into all of them. That's going to be the concept of a uh, different lesson, but you can read about them. The point is, a person could be on the very high, high end of openness to experience, or a person may be on the very low, low end of openness to experience. Most of us tend to be in the middle. But if we take an assessment for the big five trait, which you can find online in a lot of different places for free, if you take it and you answer a series of questions through those five traits, they can give you quite an accurate, accurate assessment of your personality. And you may be wondering, like, what's the point of that? Well, it can have a lot of different uses. For example, if you want to, if you're human resources and you work uh, at a company and you need to hire someone, you typically want to look for someone that is going to be on time, someone that's going to be organized. Perhaps you're going to look for someone that is much of, you know, collaborates with other people, or maybe you're going to have someone that is like always on task. If you're looking for someone that is very organized, someone that you know you can depend on, someone that you know is going to get the job done, someone that is determined, well, you got to take a look at conscientiousness. The person that is very high on conscientiousness tends to be very disciplined, determined. Let's finish the job. On the other end, the person that is low on the sense of conscientiousness tends to be very relaxed, you know, tends to be disorganized. This is the kind of person, you can see this everywhere. This is the kind of person that, for example, think of going, you know, in a person face-to-face -face class. There's some students that show up and their backpacks are beautifully arranged. You know, the notebooks are arranged by the color. Like, they bring out their notebook and they not only bring out a pen, but they bring out like five different color pens plus two highlighters because this is for the title, this is for the date. This is for the main point, this is for what the instructor said it was important, and then they highlighted like it was so fun to see students doing that. That's very high end of conscientiousness. And on the low end, you have a student that would come in with a pen that like barely writes, maybe one notebook for seven different classes and has like a or there are students that open up a folder. It happened to me once that a student had to turn in a quiz and was going through the folder and at one point they began to take the folder and just go like that through a bunch of paper at the end to fly. You're like, there's somewhere in there, mister. That's a low end of conscientiousness. Depending on what you seek, is for example the kind of trait that you'd be looking for. So imagine that you're deeply in love with someone and you want to marry someone, but imagine that you as a person tend to be very high on the sense of conscientiousness and you're going to be very low, you're going to be marrying someone that is very low on the sense of conscientiousness. You're going to like to have your house in order while the other person is comfortable in the mess that's going to create a lot of conflict. You hear the term opposites attract from a psychology standpoint, that's not true. The more common you are, the better your relationship tends to be. So, that's the concept of trait theory. It's very interesting and there's a lot that you can take out of it. But let me just tell you one last thing. In today's study of personality, fundamental traits, people still seek to see if they can find out like a new trait that could help describe something else about a person. And I was very fortunate to be in a class where a group of classmates of mine found one that I found like so ingenious and it's called need for drama. So like for example, think about that. Need for drama. Do you believe that that is a personality characteristic? Hell yeah! That's a personality characteristic. So the need for drama can help describe how some people behave when they honestly seek drama all the time. And it's so ingenious because it's true, but nobody has seen it before. They were the first one to think about it, talk about it, 
tested and it turns out that it's true and it's something that is out there. You can take an assessment that you can see how much of a need for drama person tend to, you tend to be. It's very interesting. It's a very interesting field that I'm very passionate about. But for now, you can explore everything that goes after the study of fundamental traits, like how uh, this has been studied for how it changes across the years in the lifespan, or how some aspects are biological, or how it reflects on the work that you have and the house that you have, and a lot of other things. I hope you liked it. If you want to learn more, please go and make a little bit of a reading on your own. And thank you guys for listening. <laughs>